This is part of video series for non-clinical legal and ethical principles and roles and leadership. In this video, I will cover Universal Bill of Rights. I will also cover Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, also known as HIPAA. I'll cover patient confidentiality and exceptions to the confidentiality for these patients. So patients have rights and we know that there are Bill of Rights, and this is Universal Bill of Rights, especially it's in place because of their vulnerability. They're vulnerable to abuse and they're vulnerable to mistreatment. So let me go over some important Bill of Rights for these patients. People living with mental health conditions, they do have right to make decisions about their lives and including their treatment as well, just like any other American. Now, they should be assumed competent um, to make their own decisions. And just because these patients refuse a treatment, that doesn't necessarily make them incompetent. Now, these patients do have the rights to refuse the treatment. They do have the right to least restrictive treatment. So you want to make sure that these patients are going to be getting maybe um, a support, maybe offering them a PO medication, but things like giving an IM right away or putting them in restraints, that's much more of an aggressive state and you don't want to provide that to these patients. Um, you want to offer the least restrictive treatment to these patients and they do have the right to have informed consent. They have the right to confidentiality and they also have the right to keep personal items. Now keeping personal items, this can vary depending on the hospital policy or the, depending on what the patient's criteria or crisis is. So if you have somebody who you know is going to hurt themselves and they have a belt or they have uh, some sort of a weapon that can be used as a weapon, sorry, uh, you want to make sure that you keep away those things. So let me just briefly talk about Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Now, that stands for HIPAA, right? That's Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. It is a federal law and HIPAA is mandatory and there are penalties for failure to comply with these. The purpose of HIPAA is to protect health insurance coverage, to improve access to health care. It's to help reduce fraud and abuse. This policy in place helps to improve the quality of healthcare overall and to reduce healthcare administrative costs. So anything like electronic transactions. With HIPAA, we know the clients have the right to assume that the information given to the healthcare provider will not be disclosed. This is going to require the provider to obtain a signed consent and authorization before any medical records and any information is given to maybe another provider. So now we also know that HIPAA does not allow NPs to make most disclosures about psychotherapy notes as well. Under HIPAA, disclosure of psychotherapy notes requires more than just a generalized consent. It requires patient authorization and it is specific to releasing this sensitive information. So this also applies to having two separate release of information or consent required to release information, especially when the patient's chemical use or polysubstance use is involved, and as well as psychiatric mental illness. Disclosing that to a third party, you need another consent. So I just wanna make it clear that psychotherapy notes, it is treated differently from any other mental health information because they contain particularly sensitive information. And they also are personal notes of the therapist that is typically not required or useful for treatment or payment or healthcare operations. For that reason, they don't include that. And if they did want that information, remember the patient has to consent for it. So that's gonna be a separate consent. HIPAA, we know, is a federal law that is intended to protect Americans' privacy. It's there to protect confidentiality and is there to access health care through health insurance coverage. It provides that access, right? And so as an employee, if you're changing a job and there is a, maybe a month or two month space between you and start another job, 
Now, the employer has to provide you health insurance, and that is covered under HIPAA. Yes, you may have to pay a premium, but employer is required to have health insurance coverage offered to you while you're switching your jobs. So under HIPAA, we know that patient and provider, they can communicate through email as long as HIPAA is a covered entity. So they must be applying safeguards uh, when it comes down to transmitting electronic personal health information to ensure confidentiality and the integrity of the data. So remember, healthcare providers must have a signed consent, whether it would be faxing information to a pharmacy or sending an information to an employer, they need to have a consent from the patient signed. Patient confidentiality is protected under federal statutes through Medical Record Confidentiality Act of 1995. Now, confidentiality applies to verbal and written information. This is where the provider discusses confidentiality issues with the client, establishes a consent, and clarifies any questions that the patient may have. And I can't emphasize this enough, the provider must obtain a signed medical authorization and consent form to release any medical records or any information when that is requested by the client or another healthcare provider. There are exceptions to patient confidentiality. So this would take place when an appropriate persons or organizations determine that there is a need for the information which outweighs the principle of confidentiality. Now, this takes place especially if we know that the client is revealing an intent to harm themselves or others. This would take place in cases where there is child abuse. This would also take place when there is information that's given to the attorney that's involved in litigation. So answering court orders, subpoenas, and summons, we would have to release that information. Now, another exception to patient confidentiality would be releasing records to insurance companies. Also, meeting the state's requirements for mandatory reporting for diseases or conditions, this would also break patient confidentiality. Here's another exception to patient confidentiality. It's called Tarasov Principle. Tarasov case imposed a liability on all mental health professionals to protect a victim from violent acts. So this is the court case that takes place in California in 1976. This court case has a duty to warn potential victim of imminent danger of homicidal clients. This Tarasov principle varies from state to state, so you want to make sure you check with the Board of Nursing first before you make any decisions. And if you are brave and are wanting to know what takes place in Tarasov versus reagents at the University of California, go ahead and read that court case. Let me know what you think. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.